G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Friday Knockoffs, brought to you by our beautiful friends at Pepper Jack. This week on the show, AFL Chief Photographer Michael Wilson, the man behind the lens. I'm going to ask him about his most favourite photos he's taken, the moments he's missed, and which players hit him up for photos after the game. Make sure you check it out. He's waiting for me now. Hello. Here he is. How you going, mate? Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. What's been Come happening? Uh, keep me out of trouble, mate. Yeah. Keep me out of trouble. Yeah, had, how's, uh, how's the week been? What are you, what are you up to at the moment? Uh, yeah, had a couple of shoots. Had a shoot at the Bulldogs Monday morning with a few of the boys. Um, a lot of planning and preparation, actually, for the for the W season coming up as well. We're um, going to be kicking off the team photos in the next few weeks for the, for the girls. So, yeah, plenty on, mate. Plenty on. Um, mm. Mate, the game's OG photographer, AFL head honcho, the best man, the best man that takes all the incredible flicks. It's it's incredible to finally get you in front of the camera. Um, Not you know, overly comfortable yeah. being this side What's of the it camera, like? mate. I don't know, it's a, yeah, I, I definitely prefer to be behind the lens, yeah. that's for sure. It's, um, yeah, it's always what I've, what I've done, so I don't know, it, it is good to chat about it and people seem to, uh, to enjoy the, uh, the insight I can provide from behind the lens, so yeah, happy to... Uh, Answer any questions, mate, and provide a bit of insight for sure. Well, can't wait to get into it uh, today. Country boy, Swan Hill. Yes. How did you get into photography? Uh, well, I guess, yeah, I always had a passion for photography. Like growing up um, in the country, you know, footy was a massive part of, of life in Swan Hill. Uh, yeah, played footy, you know, right from a young age, right till I was about 30 or so. And always had, you know, was cutting out the pictures out of the newspaper and, and sticking them up on my wall, all the footy. Uh, Footy photos from the weekend, and yeah, just had that that real passion for photography and for football. So, I guess it was kind of um, you know playing the game at, at a country level gave me a, a real appreciation for what the game could provide community, and I guess I transferred that appreciation into photography. And uh, yeah, to cut a long story short, I, I sort of actually studied in graphic design and uh, did uh, yeah a, a bachelor. Of Bachelor of Design for uh, three years and transitioned into photo photography about seven or eight years after that and was just started out shooting VFL games and you know lower level leagues to uh, to you know learn the skills and and sort of uh, build up a folio. So from there a few opportunities opened up and yeah here I am like 15 years later um, yeah chief photographer of the AFL. Crazy. So when you're going out and, and like transitioning from that graphic design into photography, we're just going out to games and just passion projects, taking photos of games, yeah, learning absolutely. the caper. Yeah. yeah, that was that was it. I was working Monday to Friday as a designer, and on the weekends I would just yeah go to uh, you know either a VFL game or a, a lower level Metro match or a country game and and just shoot it just to uh, you know learn the skills and techniques. I, I didn't have a uh, have a technical background with photography. It was one of our core subjects as part of the design degree, but um, it wasn't, you know, it was something I really mm. concentrated on. So, yeah, pretty much uh, self-taught, I, I guess you could say. And um, yeah, so for a while there, I was yeah working Monday to Fridays, and then on weekends, just going out as a passion project to, to build up my folio and, and learn the the caper really. What was the, what was the big break to to get noticed? How did you get noticed by the AFL to go to those games? Yeah, well, my big break probably came in 2005. I actually shot an Essendon intra club match. Um, I can remember it, it was at. Uh, Josh's paddock, and um, I just went there, shot the match, and emailed the pictures into the club. And they got back to me straight away and said, "Oh, these are great. Can you come the weekend after?" And they had another interclub match on, so went to that. And I met uh, their media manager at the time, Simon Matthews, who um, yeah, who offered me their photographer's pass for for the 2005 season, which was probably my my sort of break into the industry, I guess, because. Through that, I was able to, to meet other photographers that were shooting at the elite level and, you know, I was able to get feedback from them and learn new techniques and that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, that, I guess that was my sort of uh, foot in the door in, in the AFL industry, I guess. Love that. Hey, uh, Pepper Jack, all about character. You've got that in spades. So I've got a question for you today. What's the most important character trait for a photographer? Yeah, that's a really tough one. I think a lot of shoots you have, especially you know, portrait shoots or, or something like that, you've got to be able to connect with people. I think you have to be a people person and be able to connect quickly with, with people to, to get the best out of your subject. So for me, I think um, just being, you know, being able to sort of resonate on a level with um, with your subject is, is pretty important. Um, 
But as well, yeah, you've just got to be a you know, fairly flexible, easygoing type person that, that can get along with a lot, of, um, a lot of other personalities. So for me, that would probably be it, just to be a people person. Now, I don't want you to throw anyone under the bus here, but you've done a lot of photos. You've done a lot of clubs, a lot of team photos, AFLW, AFL men's mm -hmm. um, as well. What have been the best teams to work with? <laughs> and what have been maybe the most difficult teams to work with? And you can, you can break it down to even an error, if you like. Wow, OK. Well, usually the, the, uh, the well-resourced teams are <laughs> the, one, the best ones to work with because they have a lot of staff. Yeah. Um, if I'm using team photos as an example, um, you know, your, your Collingwoods and um, Carlton's and, you know, teams with a lot of money that have a lot of staff, I'm talking sort of pre-COVID as well, yeah. we're always very well organised and, and really um, great to work with. So, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, your well-resourced teams. Um, Teams that were difficult to work with, oh, look, there's none. I work at the AFL, mate. They're all, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah, good teams. Sure they yeah. I, can't, uh, <laughs> I can't distinguish any bad teams. Um, now, nah, in all honesty, like all teams are really great to work with. Over the journey, you, you build up relationships with, with clubs and media managers and players. And at the end of the day, um, you know, we're all working towards the same goal, getting some, some great pictures, whether it be team photo day or from a match. So, uh, no, nah, everyone's really great to work with, mate. Love it. Good answer. Uh, <laughs> you've been responsible for taking some of the most incredible photos in the AFL. Um, we've had a look through and, and, you know, some of my favourites and definitely the crowd's favourites. One being Buddy's 1000 Skull. Can you mm. talk us through that photo? Yeah, that was a crazy night. It was, uh, it was bedlam out there. It was, um, it was just mayhem. There was a lot of, um, a lot of anxiety on my behalf coming into to this moment. Um, there was just so many unknowns and so many variables that were, were kind of come into play with that, that particular moment and the pictures that ensued. So, for example, we didn't know where it was going to happen on the ground. We didn't know what match it was going to happen at. Um, it was, you know, was he going to mark the ball? Were we going to have a, a clear shot on him? Was it going to be a snap in play where, you know, you could get obstructed by a player or an umpire or something? It was just so many variables which made me really anxious. I like mm. to be in control of, you know, situations. and. You know, this was one of those things that just had uh, so many variables. So I was kind of, uh, yeah, quite nervous leading into it. Um, we had a bit of a false alarm. He kicked his third goal at that, at the um, the match against, who was it, Geelong? Geelong. At the SCG, round two. Um, yeah, he kicked his third goal late in the third quarter and I was actually at the opposite end to where he was. So there was a couple of minutes to go in the third quarter and I sort of panicked a bit thinking he was going to kick it late in the third, so I just, sprinted up to the other end of the ground um, and just, yeah, hoped he didn't kick it in the in the third quarter. There was, like, he got the ball with a couple of minutes to go and it was like he was going to snap it. He sort of had a little bit of a snap on goal. He had a, had a show at the goals and luckily it, uh, it either got smothered or sort of just got lost in play. But I remember looking back at the photos I took at that moment at the time thinking, thank God that wasn't his thousandth goal because mm. it was just a terrible photo. It was sort of back on and... Anyway, fourth quarter came. Um, I set myself up deep in the pocket on the outer side of the ground, the non-broadcast side. Got lucky in that he marked it right in front of me. Um, and I kind of, as soon as that happened, I relaxed. I was like, OK, I've got a great vantage point here. He's like 20 metres away from me. Um, I got the mark, had a perfect angle on the kick. It was kind of like a bit of a side-on 45-degree angle. Uh, and just hoped he kicked it, and, and he did. I didn't really have a plan once he kicked mm. it. I, I sort of instinct took over. I, um, I had planned to run out into the ground, but until I sort of got that photo of him actually kicking it, I wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, once it went through, uh, I yeah, just bolted out there. I, I put my other camera down, took a wide angle lens out, and just got as close to him as, as I could. Got about 10 metres out and just hit a brick wall of people. It was just, um, yeah, I just couldn't move. And then all I could feel behind me was just just all this uh, pressure of other people piling up behind me. It was actually, for a few seconds there, it was kind of scary. Yeah. I sort of um, stumbled and lost my balance. And, um, yeah, I was thinking, oh, this is actually sort of a little bit out of control. Um, fortunately, it sort of eased a little bit. Um, and there were people kind of falling over in front of me. Which the seas have parted. Yeah, yeah. In hindsight, that was what made the photo. I had a um, a clear path through to him, and I just held my camera up above my head and hoped for the best. I had no idea what I was going to get. 
um, Buddy on cue gave the the fist pump, which what which is what makes the picture. Um, but I didn't know it at the time because I couldn't really see what I was shooting. So I was kind of shooting blind. Um, when I had a second, I sort of flicked through what I had on the back of the camera and, and saw that frame, the, the fist pump, the seas had parted. Had the, um, you know, the, the SCG grandstands in the background. I just looked out and thought, okay, that's the picture. That, that is it. And I got out of there. I was probably only out there for a minute. Unbelievable. And then I made my way back through the crowd which took you know twice as long as what it did to get out there. Um, got back to my laptop, downloaded the card, had a look at it, and thought, "Yep, that that's a great image," and just tried to get it out as soon as I possibly could because we had editorial clients, we had commercial clients that were just waiting for those first pictures. Um, I remember as well, it took so long to send because the 4G and 5G signals were just. Um, overcrowded with everyone in that one spot. It was like sending it 3K a second. I'm like, hurry up, hurry up. But it got out there eventually and um, yeah, look, it's, it's one of my favourite photos. It's, um, it's just a great moment, really humbling to be a part of it and um, being able to be in a position to be able to, to take that image. I can't imagine the relief when you just know, like, bang, I've got it, this is great. Did yep. Buddy say anything about it? Have you spoke to him since? I haven't seen him since, no. I'm not sure if he's, uh, yeah, what his thoughts are on it. I, I hope he likes it. Um, like I said, he embraced the moment and that's what makes the photo. Yeah. The photo wouldn't um, have that feeling if he had been... Pushing you know, people away. Yeah, yeah. If, he, if he hadn't have been um, embracing it. And that's what made the moment. Um, look, I hope he looks back on it um, once his career's finished and, and it takes him to a happy place when he sees it. Oh, I'm sure he will. Another one that might not take you to a happy place, but definitely a lot of West Coast supporters, is, is a Dom Sheed photo, 2018 Grand Final. Incredible photo, yeah. kicking the winning goal. Mm. And the thing that's most amazing about this one is there's literally no other player in the background. It's just, it's yeah. crazy to see that. Yeah, that's, uh, that was a tough photo to shoot. I'm a Collingwood supporter. Um, obviously, the, the Eagles won that Grand Final. Um, but you're right, it, it's a very majestic type of photo. It's you know, one of those moments in a grand final that will go down in history as, as, as huge. Um, what a kick. Um, yeah, it's very unique in that it's very clean for a grand final photo. It's very clean, there's no one behind him. Um, but as a Collingwood supporter, it, it was really tough to shoot. Um, I don't get emotionally invested during a match, but um, that particular photo, I, I remember being pretty flat at the time, thinking, oh my God, he's kicked it. Um, but sometimes you just got to be professional, mate. You just got to do your job. My job that day was to, to capture that moment, and it, it is a great image. Um, got used in the AFL marketing campaign the next year, so I kept seeing it come up over and over, kept bringing up the memories of losing that grand final again, but uh, that's all part of it. Shy button mark, unbelievable mark, unbelievable mm. photo. <clears throat> yep. How did this one come about? Yeah, probably one of the best marks I've, I've seen, I would say, in in the flesh. Uh, I was actually at the opposite end of the ground. I had not a great angle on it, um, but just wrapped, I was able to get a frame of it. I think. So you shot it from that far away? Yeah, so I was in the opposite pocket. He took it at the city end of the MCG. I was in the punt road end. Um, I had a 600 millimeter telephoto lens uh, that I was using, which, you know, gives you a great sort of um, ability to, to get close to the action but even still it's a massive crop in but um, in hindsight I think the angle I did have sort of presented the the mark in its best light in that it was side on and you could really see that elevation between him and and the the opposition and uh, yeah I think um, just that leg kick as well side on sort of gives it a little bit more so yeah a lot of people are surprised that I was um, so far away from it. I was probably yeah I don't know what's the length of the ground 150 mm. meters 160 meters away so yeah um, but I guess the yeah, quality of the gear that we're using these days you're able to sort of uh, get an image crop into it and for it still to be usable yeah, yeah. love it um, you've hit some incredible photos is there is there a photo that ever got away from you is there ever one that you missed yeah there's a massive one I missed mate um, still takes me to a pretty dark place when I think about it. <laughs> um, Jeremy Howe, Queen's birthday oh, nice. uh, match against Collingwood probably four or five years ago. Um, he took that magnificent mark over, I think it was Tom McDonald on the um, MCC wing. Um, yeah, I missed that one. I had my head buried in my laptop um, 
it was the big freeze game. We had, you know, the, the big slide, the, the MND slide, um, had some, uh, some pitches, had to get out the clients of, of some of the um, personalities on the slide. So I was, uh, yeah, knee deep in um, uh, getting those pitches out. And uh, so I was working away on the laptop, heard this huge roar. So I perked up, what the hell was that? Looked up at the, uh, the scoreboard and saw the replay and he's taken one for the ages and I've got nothing of it. I was Were flat you near as a tack. Well? No, I was, uh, I was not that close to it. I still would have, I would have been a little bit back onto it. I was in the punt road uh, pocket, uh, southern Shane Warne stand side. Uh, I wouldn't have had the best angle, but regardless, a moment like that, you still want to get a frame of it. Um, so yeah, fortunately my colleague uh, was in the pocket and got a frame of it, so we are covered from an AFL photos perspective. But from a selfish point of view, you always want to get those those great marks. Um, yeah, took I, I was pretty flat after that, mate. It's uh, probably a good lesson that you know you've got to choose your moments to to file and to to be on your laptop to get those uh, pictures out. So yeah, it was uh, just one of those ones I've missed. Uh, there's been a few more over the journey, but that was the one I, I always harp back to and. Yeah, wish I had got it. It was a great mark. It was. Is there a player that comes to mind when, when you're shooting, you just get excited? You, you watch them, you go, something's going to happen today. Is it, like, does one play stand out? Yeah, the high flyers, you know, like um, your Boltons, your Howes. Um, anyone that can take a scream, mate, you're always pretty excited going into a match. Um, and you're on, you know, high alert, I guess, whenever they're near the ball. Um, I always used to say Eastern Wood was my favourite player to photograph. Um, obviously a good looking rooster, really athletic the way he played. He always used to just um, make just even a, a simple drop punt look kind of classical. Mm. I don't know, it's just the, the way he kind of moved. Um, and you know, he was a leader, he was, you know, took speckies, like he, he sort of had it all. Um, but yeah, anyone that can take a specky, you, you go into a match pretty excited. Mm. Two players that stand out for me that I don't photograph, but I like looking at, they just always seem to take a good photos. Classically, Ben Cousins. Yep. And mm. secondly, modern day um, player that's just doing incredible things, Bailey Smith. They just look like they always take a good photo. Yeah, totally agree. They, they don't know how to take a bad photo, mm. those two guys. Um, yeah, Baz is, he's a photographer's dream. Um, whether he's posing for a portrait or playing, um, he's always just, yeah, just he just works in the frame. Um, and Ben Cousins too, yeah. Same thing. It's just um, some players just have that ability to uh, to look good <laughs> in wow. front of the camera. They both had that. I remember taking one photo of Cuz. Actually, it was like this random gym session when he first joined Richmond. Um, obviously known for his pipes, but he was doing this planking um, exercise, and I've got this angle front onto him, um, and he's like, it looks like his biceps are literally about to explode. And I was just in awe as to to how fit he was. Um, but yeah, guys like that, um, you know, there's a few of them out there that just work in front of the camera and that's just a couple of them. Especially as well, like what, what surprises you about the athletes? Like not even just taking photos of them, but is there things that you've seen in certain players like work rate up close? Because you can feel it, you can hear what they're saying, you're so close to them. Mm. Is there any moments or nuances that you look back and go, geez, that was an incredible bit of play. I didn't get a photo of it, but that was crazy to see what that player did out there. Yeah, you're quite often in awe of what some of the um, the really highly skilled players are capable of doing as well. But I think being on the sidelines as well, you get an appreciation for how physical the game still yeah. is. Like, you know, people talk about how it's sanitised now and there's, there's no hardness to it. But if you if you hear the sounds and bodies uh, collide and just, you know, you see the sweat flying and just the intensity that uh, every player that goes out there um, applies themselves with, um, I think you just have an appreciation overall for the commitment that these these guys make, um, just to to get themselves up every week. But to, just it's an absolute battering they go through each weekend, um, and I think that generally you just get an appreciation for that being on the sidelines. And like you said, you, you, we you know we're privy to to some of the inner sanctums. We on team photo days, you know, we we get to see how the the guys train and you know the stuff they go through and. Uh, training sessions as well. So um, I think any player that, that goes out there is is to be commended on the commitment that they um, put into their training and and 
you know, the way they play. Mm. I love now as well that we're at that this time in, in footy. It used to be seen as maybe, uh, you know, a tall poppy thing if players are pumping themselves up and pump and posting cool photos of themselves. But now we're seeing this is coming into a trend, which I love. Yep. So firstly, how special is that to you when players use your photos through their social media? Secondly, is there any players that will ask you to get some good photos of them or they really want you to try and get some, get some more? Um, yeah, first part of your question, uh, you always do like to see your pictures out there and when a player either, you know, retweets or regrams your photo, it's, it's kind of like, you, you do get a bit of a buzz because it's like you've done your job and you've, you know, you've presented a, an image to the player that they're happy with and that's, you know, what, effectively what we're trying to do is create great images. Um, secondly, I don't know, Josh Dunkley's always pretty good on the uh, <laughs> yeah. direct message after a game saying, hey, mate, you got any, uh, any good flicks? That's fantastic. Uh, there's, I don't know, most, most players, you know, got a good relationship with them. Yeah. If they send you a, a quick message saying, hey, mate, any picks? Happy to supply. Like, yeah. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I, I would be loving to send some flicks as well. Yeah. Um, are you in your dream job? Yeah, I am. I'm, uh, mate, I'm very lucky to do what I do. I mean, I have a passion for football and for photography. So for me, it, it is a great job. It's, um, I can't see myself doing anything else ever. Um, yeah, I get to com combine my two passions every day, which I think most people, that's what they would want for their job. Mm. Yeah. Uh, any tips for aspiring photographers out there? Um, yeah, I get this question a lot. Like, there, there's no right or wrong way to get um, you know, to get to be a professional photographer. Everyone's got their own path. Mine was kind of in a roundabout way, but um, yeah, my advice is just get the gear and shoot, like just shoot as much as you can, try different things, uh, you know, network, um, be receptive to feedback. Just, yeah, get out there and just, you've just got to be quite proactive and, and really get your name out there, get your images out there and, and just try different things and, you know, once you get an opportunity, um, you've got to capitalise on it and just uh, put your best foot forward. Mm. From your story today, hearing it, it's like going out, volunteering your time, getting the getting the, the photos taken in, getting those reps in so that when that opportunity comes, you're ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, once you don't get an opportunity that comes along very often, so if you do, you've really got to capitalise on it. Huge. Yeah. Uh, Friday night ritual. Now there's two. One, when you, ta when you when we are photographing a game, what is your ritual? And yep. then what's your ritual when you're not, uh, you're not working? Yeah, so Friday night match, uh, usually get to the game a couple of hours beforehand, go through the brief. So we get a photographic brief for each match. Uh, we get requests from the clubs, from um, departments at the AFL, um, commercial partners of the AFL, um, all put in requests for you know, could be pictures of a particular player or a particular product, like for example, uh, Aquium, the uh, the hand, official hand sanitizer of the AFL, like to see their uh, their product out there on the back of the um, the trainers bibs and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, go through the photo brief, um, chat to the other photographers that are there. If uh, if there's another AFL photographer there, work out who's doing what on the brief. Um, and then, yeah, just uh, get ready for the match, unpack the gear, get set up on the sidelines. Usually, uh, like a, a very strong coffee beforehand, mate, just to perk up and, and tune in. Um, and then, yeah, just you're on you're on the tools. It's just once the match starts, you're just photographing pretty much, you know, every contest in your area, looking out for uh, for news stories. Um, and then, yeah, hoping there's some great action pictures thrown in along the way, filing as you go. Um, and then, yeah, probably wrap up an hour or two after the game. It's a, it's a late finish, especially if there's a, a night match down in Geelong. Probably won't get home till 1 a.m. or so. Um, so, yeah, that, that's match day routine. And are you listening to the footy while, you, while you're watching? Absolutely, yeah. The radio is a critical part of, of uh, what we do. Just keeps you across, uh, you know, developing news, injuries, that kind yeah. of stuff. It's like another set of eyes for you. So always listen to the radio when, yeah. when I'm shooting. Who's your favourite commentator? I like the Triple M guys, yeah. um, BT, and I like them just because they're funny. Yeah. They're, they, you know, they just take the piss out of each other, and uh, yeah, I think um, don't like uh, don't like to listen to anything too intense or anything. You know, something light-hearted. So the Triple M's my go-to. Yeah, and then Friday when you're when you're off, you're at home chilling out, watching on TV. What do you do? Yeah, pretty much just a few beers and some pizza, mate. Like and uh, yeah, um, yeah, nothing too 
too, uh, <laughs> nothing too serious, Good. just chilling Good. out, yeah. Well, enjoy it, because tonight we've, uh, we've got you a nice bottle of pepper jack, my friend. Beautiful. So sit down, <sighs> that would be fantastic. And enjoy that bad boy. Thanks, mate. Enjoy. So Appreciate that. Up, mate. Going to Delson. Good stuff. Cheers. Cheers.